welcome back and this video I'm going to be showing you how to use an auto router uh, with GeekCAD so that you don't have to uh, run all of the tracks by hand the computer will actually try to figure out the best way to do it um, and you may have to tweak it after it's done a little but for a large circuit where there may have hundreds of tracks it could literally save you hours so uh, let's get going with this the first thing that you will need is to install a well install kind of download a program called free routing um, it's now open source it used to not be but it has been open sourced um, well it used to be online but now you can just get the original program so go ahead and download the zip or clone it with git or something and when you extract it you will see uh, a binaries folder inside we want that and then you want to take the jar file copy or um, make a link I chose to make a link to leave the original one there and rename your link uh, free route oops free route and what are we gonna do with that well let's go back to the keycad program it says fast access to free route external advanced router and if you hover over this export and launch free route it says free router can only be run if free route.jar is found in the keycad binaries folder okay so that just means that we have to put this link in the same place where the keycad binary is where is the keycad binary well in Linux uh, there's a command to figure out where a certain program is located and then be which and then we'll see where keycad binary is and it's in user bin. So what that means is we need to copy this Java file, the jar, into slash user slash bin. I already have it there, you know. Of course, make sure that you have it um, executable. It might not be by default, I don't know. So unfortunately, it is a little bit of a hassle, but now that we've got that, you know what? Yeah, that's you can. It looks like you can um, just download it and run the jar file. You might not have to go through uh, all of the all the um, all the ropes, I guess, of putting it into the user bin folder. Um, I'll show I'll show you both ways what what you can expect. We'll go the hard route first, I suppose. Oops, binaries, not libraries. So this is just as if I had downloaded it and I haven't moved anything anywhere or created any links. I'm going to run the jar file. I'm showing you this first because it will probably be easier to follow along. We want to go ahead and open our DSN file. Oh, um, well, uh, 
I already have it exported, but I forgot to say that if you haven't done that already, you make sure that you export a Spectra DSN file. Design? DSN design? Maybe. I'm not sure. And then you can run the free routing program. You'll actually be able to open it. And so it doesn't look quite as pretty as KiCad, but I mean, that's not so important. And you literally just hit the auto router button and it wires everything for you. Now I would like to take this blue trace that's on the, the back and put it on the top, um, but I'll do that in KiCad. And we export, you could do uh, save as, but we actually need a Spectra session file, so it took me a little while to find that button. Now you can just save and quit. And we're done with that. And then you back import the session file. Okay. So KiCad does not have its own built in router, and that means it's connecting out with another open source program. That's kind of the beauty of open source is that. All these programs are pluggable and they're modular and they work with each other and you'd never have that with proprietary software you know from different companies but um, it works with FreeCAD. The, the downside though is you have to operate within separate programs and import and export. They may in the future smooth out this process a little. Um, I think they're still getting over the some of the bumps of free route not being available online and going open source all of that kind of through a curveball but um, I'm hoping it will be more seamless in the future so anyway there's our uh, ground trace that's green because it's on the wrong side and I can delete that and retrace it but I want to show you what it will happen if you do go ahead and put the executable where it can find it. So we're gonna, uh, you know, I don't, I think I'm just gonna have to re-delete all this. Okay, it also seems like I have lots of traces stacked on top of each other. Alright, sorry about that. We can also export a Spectra design and launch Freeroute. So this was their attempt to make it a little bit more seamless if you install, if you download the free route binary and put it in your, it basically put it beside wherever the, the KiCad binary is, then it will go ahead and import it. Now my thought with that is, it wasn't actually that much harder to just use free route by itself you know, I haven't saved that much time just by being able to click that middle button. But, oh well. Might as well, I guess. And then, back import. So, we probably... 
um, lost time rather than gain time because this is such a small circuit. But for something larger, oh yeah, I mean that that would increase your productivity just tenfold. Now, you will have to go back in and clean it up a lot of times. In my case, since I'm hoping to make this on a CNC router, um, I'm not okay with having two layers. I need everything on one side. Well, that's fine. We're done already. So that is how auto routing currently works in KiCad. It is very cool. I don't know all of the science that goes into uh, routing, and it's almost like artificial intelligence at trying to figure out where to put everything. And I would say it did just about the same wiring that I did as a human, and I think that that's um, very impressive. I did want to make a comment that I figured out a way to change the trace thickness from the design rules and have it update everything. I probably should have found this out in the last video, um, but it wasn't very intuitive. So here we go. I'm going to set the power traces to like 0.015 and default to point. I'm just changing the numbers so that we'll see a, a visual difference. Ah, oh, I can't go that low. Alright. Here, we'll just have crazy thick power traces. I don't know if it will let us do that, but... I'll just make everything 0 .02, something like that. Wait, track size is less than min track size. Alright, that's fine. So here's what you gotta do. Go to your add tracks and vias, right click on one of the tracks, and then go to edit all tracks and vias, and then instead of current net, set uh, go to the next option set all tracks and vias to their net class value all right so if it's ground it will redefine it to have the net class width for ground if it is plus 15 volts it will redefine it to have what the design rules say 15 volt line should have something like that and when I hit OK everything should update and I have to hit yes first I'm moving things out of the way so we can see it update. Ha! Huh. All right. <laughs> so that's another time saver. I wish I could have. Been f I wish I knew this when I was making the routing video. But if you stuck around for this video, you just learned a jewel. So, and, and it's it wasn't that intuitive to find out. Um, I, I think it's a little bit strange that in order to update everything you have to click on one of the tracks and then go through all sorts of options but it works and it's pretty fast so that's enough fooling around for this video um, there's still plenty of other topics to go into with KiCad um, I do have an idea for what I'm going to do next video. We might get into some 3D rendering with the circuit board, so that'll be fun. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.